The final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 14491 in the name of Emma Harper on the Mabel Bypass and South Scotland Road infrastructure. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Emma Harper to open the debate. Ms Harper, please. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to start by thanking all from across the Chamber who have supported my motion regarding the Mabel Bypass and wider South Scotland infrastructure. All of their support from my colleagues has allowed us to have this important debate this evening, which is so crucial to those we represent across the South West of Scotland. And I'd also like to welcome the support and the collegial working um, and input from Jean Freeman, who's a constituency MSP for the area. She's been able to help engage in this issue, raise awareness of the issue, and I look forward to working with the Cabinet Secretary in the future about that. I also pay tribute to both the A75 and A77 action groups, also watching from home. Um, the digital infrastructure that uh, we have been so keen to wait on means that uh, many people have chosen not to transfer uh, travel across the region but they are watching from home so i i pay uh, I, I would like to thank them for their work in lobbying myself other elected members and the scottish government for major investment on these transport and infrastructure issues affecting our main arterial routes in the southwest presiding officer people in maybole have been campaigning for a town bypass for 70 years 70 years it seems it's a long time. Members of the Mabel Bypass Committee, Peter Mason, David Kilty, and former MSP Adam Ingram, to name but a few, helped me with the additional information ahead of this debate. I spoke directly with Peter and Adam, and they explained that it was agreed by many, many people years ago, before this parliament was even created, that in order for Mabel to be a viable and modern town, a bypass was essential. And the committee should be commended for having the foresight to secure future funding to support the historic attributes of the town centre. In 1998, 22 years ago, even again before the creation of this parliament, the Maybole Community Council took the decision to set up a subcommittee to formally campaign for a bypass. Peter Mason has chaired the group ever since, and I thank him for that. The committee, made up of hard-working and dedicated local people with cross-party associations, have met every single Transport Cabinet Secretary and Minister since this Parliament's creation 20 years ago. And their only interest is the future of Maybole and surrounding area, its people, its growth and its prosperity. Presiding officer, speaking with the local people from Maybole has made me realise just how important a bypass is for the town. Five kilometres and estimated cost of £30 million. In addition to some of the more obvious reasons in favour of a bypass is that overall roads improvement will contribute to attracting people to rural Scotland, GPs, teachers, healthcare workers and skilled professionals, people we need to live and work in our rural South West Scotland. Maybole and the connecting A77 boasts much of South Scotland's history, its historic buildings and its heritage. Both the town hall and the castle have serious cracks, which are believed to be due to the heavy traffic trundling its way through the town centre. Presiding officer, while I am encouraged that it is this SNP Scottish Government which has committed to the construction of the Maybole Bypass, I would urge the Cabinet Secretary and indeed the Scottish Government to make the contractor announcement as soon as possible. The announcement will allow for shovels to be in the ground and diggers to be in the ground and for this government to show the people of the South West that they are not forgotten. And that is this, it's this SNP government which is standing up and delivering for them. Presiding officer, as well as the Mabel bypass, there is also a need for wider upgrades to infrastructure around South Scotland, particularly the A75, 76 and 77. These main critical arterial routes connect the South West to wider Scotland and to international markets via the port of Cairn Ryan. Businesses, local people and our emergency services rely on these roads for their operations and they are essential in bringing people, tourists and investment to the region. For tourists, I am reminded of a comment since I was a wee girl which is aimed at people coming from the south heading north that they should not forget to turn left at Gretna. Presiding officer, the roads are not fit for current travelling and haulage purposes, and this is causing much upset, dismay and frustration for people locally. 
In August this summer, I hosted a meeting at Stranraer with representatives from the A75 and A77 action groups. It was also attended by Stena and P&O ferry representatives, as well as MSPs, and I welcomed the Cabinet Secretary for Transport, Infrastructure and Connectivity. It was an opportunity to listen to the local voices. At the meeting, it was concerning to hear Sten and P&O, as well as local people, indicate that they felt forgotten by the Scottish Government because of no clear commitment for investment on these routes. Rather more worryingly, anecdotal evidence suggests that some hauliers are avoiding using the A75 and using alternative routes to access Ireland by travelling to Holyhead, blaming the poor infrastructure and the 40 mile an hour speed limit as the reason. We cannot let this happen, and I would ask the Scottish Government to investigate and discuss this with the companies. Presiding Officer, I would like to welcome the positive steps taken by this Government for the improvements on the A75 and A77 so far, and the work to create the Maybole Bypass. I encourage people to provide input into the South West Strategic Roads Review, and indeed, when elected members met Hamza Youssef at a meeting organised by Jeannie Freeman MSP, he encouraged them to continue to feed into ongoing road improvement suggestions ahead of the launch of the review. I will take the opportunity to stress to the Cabinet Secretary how important it is for this SNP government to ensure that people in the South West are listened to, are connected to a wider Scotland and the rest of the UK, and most importantly, feel as if they are not forgotten. Additionally, I call on the Scottish Government to provide feedback as to when the construction company will be announced so that we can also witness the construction of the Mabel Bypass. Presiding Officer, I conclude with a comment made to me from the Chairman of Stranraer Development Trust, Romano Pertucci, but it reflects across the wider South West communities with regard to our conversation about the roads. Romano said, We are Scotland. Help make us part of Scotland and connect us to Scotland. So that's my message, presiding officer, to the Cabinet Secretary today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I